Good morning everybody. It's not a very nice day today. It is grey and drizzly outside but it's good to be here with you in Saturday Club and uh, that's the important thing. The weather is not important um, although I may get damp on my walk later on today. I'm all ready for Saturday Club. I've made a cup of tea ready for it to go cold um, <laughs> like I always do, but uh, I'm all ready for Saturday Club today. I was ready early this morning. I thought I was going to be late, but I was actually ready early, which was really good. So we'll just wait to see if some people are going to join us. At the moment, I don't think we've got anyone watching, but I'm sure that people will join a little later on. And, uh, and then we'll start Saturday Club at about half past nine, like we normally do. But if you're joining early or if you've just come in, then welcome, hello, and maybe you can say hello to me in the chat box. And I wonder what you've been up to this week. I've been very busy. Um, I've been doing some work. I've been learning about sleep and I've been thinking about how we can cope with anxiety. I've been doing all sorts of things. I learned some really interesting things about sleep yesterday. Um, but I can't remember them now. I shall have to re remind myself. And I've been busy with my craft. And I'm wondering if you can guess what I'm in the middle of making. And hopefully by next week it will be finished and you can see whether you're right or not. So I wonder what you think I'm making. So this is part of it. I wonder what you think that is. It's got, if I sprinkle, it's got some, uh, some knots on either end. And it's made out of quite stiff yarn. It's it's not um it's not wool. It's actually cotton. It's quite stiff. So that's part of it. And I finished that part. And now I'm working on part two. And part two so far looks like that. So that's my ball of that's my ball of yarn. So there's the yarn. And there's the part that I'm working on on my crochet hook. So I wonder what it's going to be, and that's part two, and then there are two more parts to come. So there are four parts all together, and then I have to put it all together and do a bit of embroidery. So I wonder if you can guess what you think I'm making in crochet this week. And I've also been doing some embroidery. Um, I wonder if I can get that out. Shall I show you my embroidery that I've been doing? If you wait here. started doing this on Thursday. I'll unwind it. Oh, you can see the back at the moment. I don't know if you could read that word. It says autumn shows. And then it, the whole thing is going to say autumn shows how beautiful it is to let things go. And I've been using wool and I've been using special shiny embroidery thread. So I've been working on that as well. So it's nice to have little projects to do. And I know that some of you have been enjoying doing the crafts that we uh, that I send out every week. And that's really nice to know as well. It's always nice when mums and dads email me pictures of the crafts and let me know whether, boys and girls, you've enjoyed the craft that I've sent out every week. So thank you, mums and dads, who do that. And I've got some people's crafts to show you. And I've just seen we've had our first person join us. So hello, person number one who is joining us. I've been sitting here talking to myself for the last four minutes. I was beginning to think that no one was going to come and watch Saturday Club today. But do you know, it's very strange. On my computer, when I'm doing Saturday Club, it tells me that maybe one or two or three or four or maybe five people are watching Saturday Club. If I go back and check at the end of the week to see how many people have watched the videos on Facebook and on my church's YouTube channel, there are so many people who watch Saturday Club. Do you know, last, last week's Saturday Club, 266 people have watched it so far, which is an awful lot of people. So I'm really pleased that so many people are getting to see Saturday Club and are learning about God and about God's plan for salvation in exodus and i don't know if you just heard a bleep but i've forgotten to put my phone on silent so i'd better put my phone on silent sorry 
There we are. I'll put my phone on silent just in case someone tries to ring me. Oh, I see that Alinda is watching from Uganda. Alinda Hillary Norton. Hello, Alinda. And uh, and then we've got another message. Oh, which I can't see. Another message from Paula, but I can't seem to, to see it. It's not letting me scroll down. There's a message from Paula as well, but I can't see what she said. <laughs> There's a button in the way. Oh, there we are. Yes, yeah, she said I'm here. Oh, look. Hello, Paula. I'm glad that you're watching. So it's really good that people are watching. And some people have sent their craft in this week. And now, today is a very special day. Because as you may know, if you've been watching Saturday Club for a while, there are three boys in my church who watch Saturday Club. And they watch it on a Sunday afternoon, I think now. But there are three boys who watch it. And their names are Josiah and Reuben and Joel. And Josiah and Reuben are in my Sunday school class. When we were able to have Sunday school, they came to my Sunday school class. But Joel was too little. But this week, Joel was able to do the craft that we all did, that I did. So that was really exciting. So I've got to show you Joel's wonderful frogs. I think he might have had some help with the cutting out. But there are Joel's wonderful frogs that he's, he's done. And they're green and yellow frogs. And it looks to me like he's stamped on them. So well done, Joel. That's really lovely frogs. And then there's Joel's brother, Reuben. That's the middle boy. And Joel's fro Reuben's frogs are all in different shades of green. And I think, yeah, all in different shades of green. And I really like the fact that each frog is different and there's a dark green frog in the circle. And then there's Josiah's one. And Josiah, I think he's done one painted and then he's done some other frogs that he's coloured in. So he's done two different... Four, two sets of frogs, eight frogs all together. So well done, Josiah. And uh, it looks like you really enjoyed doing that. So thank you very much for sending those in, boys. So I need to say hello to Josiah and Reuben and Joel. And then I also need to say hello to their cousins, Brandon and Jaden and Layla. Hello, are you watching? And then from London, we've got those three boys, Isaac, Daniel, Luke and Noah. Hello, boys. And then also in London are Finley and Bethany. Hello, are you enjoying half term, everyone? And then I don't know if Scarlett and Gracie down the road are watching. And then in Switzerland, we've got Michaela and Matthias. Are you still watching Michaela and Matthias? I see your mum's been baking again this week. And then there's Jamie and her baby sister, Emily. Hello, Jamie. Hello, Emily. And then there's Jessie and little Lena. Hello, girls. And then there's Nina. Hello, Nina. And Irina and Sonia. Hello to you too. And your cousin in Indonesia, Michelle. And then in Luxembourg, we've got Joffiel and Kate. I hope you're okay. I haven't had your craft this week. I hope you're okay, Joffiel and Kate. And then in France, bonjour, Luke. Bonjour, Julia. Comment ça va? And then all the way in Australia, hello, Ryan. And then in India, there's Paul. And then I don't know whether Prastin, who was watching the other week with her mum, Ashmita, my friend Ashmita. I don't know whether Pras Prastin and her friend, my friend Ashmita are watching this week. It would be really good if you were. Hello, everybody. And I really hope that you're looking forward to Saturday Club. I'm getting as much of this tea down as I can. I've had a bit of a sore throat this week. My throat voice keeps on going all croaky. Yesterday I was teaching grown-ups and I was so nervous. I was talking really, really fast and I kept on having to stop and have a drink of water. So it is half past nine now, so I think we'll start with our Saturday club and we're going to start off like we always do by praying and asking God to help us. So let's put our hands together and close our eyes and pray to God. And I'd really like you to say a nice big Amen at the end. Dear God, thank you that you have kept us safe this week. Thank you um, that we are able to watch Saturday Club. Even though we can't see each other face to face, thank you that we can all be in our homes and watching Saturday Club together. 
thank you for your word the bible and for the wonderful stories that there are in it and thank you that all of the stories teach us about your plan to send Jesus to save sinners. Help us as we learn about the plague of life in Saturday Club today. In Jesus' name, Amen. I hope there was a nice big Amen. And do you know, Amen means I agree with that. So when you're saying Amen, you're saying you agree with everything that the person has prayed. Now, we've got our memory verse and we're learning in our memory verse a psalm and I wonder if you can remember what psalm it is. It's a very famous psalm and remember a psalm is a song. A psalm is a song that was written to sing to God and this psalm is Psalm 23. Psalm 23 and it's a psalm that King David wrote and it's all about how God is our shepherd and King David was a shepherd boy and King David wrote this psalm about being a shepherd. So it's Psalm 23. Let's see if you can remember what we learned last week. If I hold it up and try and do the actions with the other hand, it was the Lord is my shepherd down by your side. I shall not want. And the next bit. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. That's what we've got up to so far. And now this bit that we're going to learn today are the next few verses. And so the first part of the verse is, He restoreth my soul. He restores my soul. And that means that God, when, that God is looking after us and that maybe if we're um if we're struggling or if we're not doing well that god restores us he helps us he restores our soul so the action for he restores our soul is he restores my soul so wave your hand round restores my soul and the soul is the part inside you that makes you you so he restoreth my soul and then the next part is he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. So that means that God shows us where we should go and God teaches us how to follow him. And the actions are, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. Making your hands as if they were feet. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. And then the very last part we're going to learn today is for his name's sake. God does that, all of those things to us to bring himself glory because he is a great God. And so we're going to go for his names, pointing to heaven, for his name's sake. Two fingers like that, name's sake. So the, all of the actions we're learning today is he restoreth my soul, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Should we do that together? He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So shall we see if we can do it right from the beginning? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. It's getting quite long now, isn't it? But let's see if we can learn it. It's a really good psalm to learn. So that's our psalm that we're learning. Now, I wonder if your mum or dad have ever said to you, you can do that when you're older. Maybe there's something that you really wanted to do and they've said, not now, you can do that when you're older. Or maybe even they've said, you can do that when you're a grown-up, but it's something for grown-ups, it's not for children. But on the other hand, maybe there are some things that your mum and dad say, I'm too old to do that. Have you ever heard your mum and dad say that? I'm getting too old to do that. I say that when I've been sitting on the floor and then I have to stand up. I'm getting too old to sit on the floor. 
Um, so I've got some pictures here and some of them are things that children normally do and other things are things that only grown-ups can do. So let's start with a nice easy one. We've got some matches here, some matches. So what do you think? Are matches something that children can use or is it something that only grown-ups should use? What do you think? It's something that only grown-ups should use. Children should definitely not play with matches. What about this one? Do you go to a park and there are some swings? Who normally goes on the swings? Is it grown-ups or is it children? Who goes on the swings, the grown-ups or the children? Well, I do like going on swings, but really, it's children who go on swings. Swings are for children. So let's put that on the other side. Right. What about this one? There's a chopping board and a really big, heavy, sharp knife. Who should use that? Should children use that? Or should grown-ups use that? What do you think, children or grown-ups? Well, I hope that you think that grown-ups should use the knife. So I'm going to put that on my grown-ups pile. Now, here's another one. It's a paddling pool. It's a paddling pool with a beach ball in it. An inflatable paddling pool. What do you think? Is that something that goes on my grown-ups pile for grown-ups, which is on this side? Or is it something that goes on my children pile, which is on this side? Who normally uses a paddling pool? Well, a grown-up might put their foot in it, but really to get in and have a splash around, I think that's for children. So I'm going to put that over here on my children pile. What about this one? It's a car. Who is allowed to drive a car? Do grown-ups drive cars or do children drive cars? What do you think? Well, I hope you think that grown-ups drive cars. Children don't drive cars. You're too young. So that goes on my grown-ups pile. Another one here. We've got some medicine, some medication in special pill bottles. Who is, who is the person who should be in charge of if you have to take medication? Who should be in charge? Is that your job? Do children look at open the medication and give it to people? Or do grown-ups open medication and give it to people if you need medicine? Children or grown-ups? Is it children? No, of course not. That's for grown-ups. Medicine is something that only grown-ups should deal, should deal with. So we put that on the grown-ups pile. Now what have we got here? A sand pit. Who gets to go and play in sand pits? and build things. Is it grown-ups or is it children? What do you think? It's something that children get to do. You get all the fun things. You get to go in sand pits and, dry, and do things like that. And the last one, we've got a bouncy castle, a bouncy castle. So what do you think? Do grown-ups get to go on bouncy castles or do children get to go on bouncy castles? Well, this makes me very sad because bouncy castles are great fun, but that's something that children get to do. So I'm going to put that on my children pile. Now, there are some things that children can't do and that only grown-ups should do. But there are some things that even grown-ups can't do. There are some things that only God can do. And we're going to learn today about when God did something no one else could do. Do you know, I've just realised something. We forgot to sing first thing today. We were supposed to sing, my God is so big, and I forgot about it. So we'll sing it now, because that's a really good song to think about when we're thinking about how there are things that only God can do, and God is so big. So we'll sing, my God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. You ready? My God is so big. So strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do.
My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The rivers are his, the mountains are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. That's right, God is so big, so strong, so mighty and powerful, there's nothing that God can't do. But that's not true for us. There are many things that we can't do and that only God can do. And we're going to be learning about one of those things today. Now, in Saturday Club, all of our stories come from the Bible. And guess what I forgot to bring downstairs? My Bible. Fortunately, there's one on the other side of the living room. There we go, we've got my Bible. So in Saturday Club, all of our stories come from the Bible. Now, can you remember how many books are in the Bible? Was it 10? Was it 20? No. Can you remember how many there are? I'll give you a clue, I'll hold up our board. There we go. There are 66 books in the Bible, 66 books, but they all tell one big story, the story of God's plan to send Jesus. And today's story comes still from the second book of the Bible, from Exodus. Here it is, and I'm going to read part of that story to you now. I'm going to read to you from Exodus and chapter 16. I need to find Exodus, it's near the beginning of the Bible. So not Exodus chapter 16, Exodus chapter 8 verse 16. And I'm just going to read to you one, two, three, four verses. And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land, that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so, for Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth. And it became lice in man and in beast. All of the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could not. So there were lice upon man and upon beast. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had said. Now, in Saturday Club, we're learning about the book of Exodus. And in the book of Exodus, God has made a picture for us in the Bible. The story of the Israelites in Exodus is the story of God's plan to save sinners. Remember, the Israelites were slaves in Egypt and they were being very cruelly treated. But God had a plan to rescue them. And as we're learning about God's plan to rescue the Israelites, we're learning about God's plan to rescue us from our sins. Now, the story that we read this morning was so short, that was the whole of the story. But it's got a very important message. God had sent Moses and Aaron to Pharaoh with a message. And I wonder if you can remember what that message was. It was... Let my people go. But Pharaoh had a hard heart. He wouldn't listen to God. He kept on saying no. So God had started doing wonderful but frightening things in Egypt, which would show to Pharaoh and all the Egyptians that he is God. And we call them the ten plagues of Egypt. So far, we've learnt about two plagues. We had the plague of blood, 
when all of the water turned to blood and the fish died and the river stank and then coming out of the river we had the plague of frogs that was last week the plague of frogs now the important thing that I want you to remember about these two plagues was that Pharaoh's magicians were able to do the same thing as God had done. God turned water into blood by his power and the magicians turned water into blood by the power of Satan. God made frogs cover the land of Egypt by his power and the magicians made frogs come out of the river by the power of Satan, God's enemy. So the magicians thought that they could do everything that God could do. And Pharaoh thought that his magicians could do everything that God could do. So whenever God spoke to Pharaoh and said, let my people go, Pharaoh said, no. Now we only read just a few verses from the Bible today but they tell the whole of our story and it's a very important story in the story of the ten plagues of Egypt. And it's just the same as the first two plagues. God gave Moses a message. God told Moses to tell Aaron to reach out his rod and hit the dust on the ground. God said that when Aaron did this, the dust would become lice all over Egypt. Lice are little insects that live on people's skin and bite them. You might have had head lice in your hair. They make you really, really itchy. So Aaron did what God had said. He reached out his rod and hit the dust on the ground. And it became lice. There were lice everywhere in Egypt. Lice on boys, lice on girls, lice on men, lice on women. Lice on all the animals, lice everywhere. Well, when Pharaoh saw the lice, he thought, My magicians will be able to make the lice too. My magicians are just as powerful as God. So Pharaoh called his magicians and said to them, Make lice like you've done before. But the magicians could not turn the dust into lice. The magician said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. They meant that the lice came from God. God had used his power to turn the dust into lice and the magicians recognised that God was more powerful than they were. What do you think? Did Pharaoh recognise that God was more powerful than his magicians? The Bible says no. Pharaoh wouldn't listen to his magicians and he wouldn't listen to God because his heart was hard. He still would not let the Israelites go. Now, the stories in Exodus about the plagues of Egypt teach us a very important lesson. Pharaoh had been warned by God to let the Israelites go. God had said that if he didn't let the Israelites go, God would make wonderful but frightening things happen in Egypt. But Pharaoh wouldn't listen. He had a hard heart. Today we learnt that even though God did something which Pharaoh's magicians couldn't do, Pharaoh still wouldn't listen to God. Some people today think that there is no God. They think that people are so clever that they can solve any problem by themselves. They think that we don't need God's help. And sometimes God sends problems which people can't solve to make everyone see that he is God. Sometimes we have problems like earthquakes or floods or even the horrible virus that we've got at the moment. All of these things teach us that God is powerful and that he is in control and that we need his help. And when something like this happens, what we should do is stop and listen to God and ask God to help us. But lots of people are like Pharaoh. They have hard hearts and they don't stop and listen to God. 
So what does God tell us when these things happen? We can find out in the Bible. God tells us that we are sinners who have broken his good law. God warns us that one day Jesus will come back and that our sins will be punished. But God also tells us that there is a rescue plan. God promises that if we go with it to him and ask him to forgive us, because Jesus died on the cross for us, then he will forgive us and bring us to heaven to live with him forever. And we need to listen to God's message. We must be careful not to have a hard heart like Pharaoh did. We need to come to Jesus and ask him to forgive us before it's too late. And we're going to pray and we're going to ask God to help us to understand that message now. So let's put our hands together, close our eyes and pray. Dear God, please help us to understand your message in the Bible. Help us to understand that we need to come to you and ask you to forgive us for our sins and the times we break your good law. Help us to understand that we need to obey you in everything we do. Amen. Right, now I've got a craft for you to do. And do you know, I got so excited when I did this craft myself yesterday. I forgot to do part of it and I couldn't go back and undo it. So I've forgotten part of my craft, but I'll explain what I should have done. So I, you should have a picture with a person and a cow and a sheep. And the cow and the sheep are fitting together like that. So what I would like you to do, this is the bit I forgot to do, is colour in those people. So colour in the cow and colour in the sheep and colour in the person and give the person a sad face because they're going to be very grumpy because of what you do next. And then what you need to do is very carefully put glue all over your colouring. Nice squeezy glue you need. And then you need to get either some pepper, I've got pepper here, or maybe some poppy seeds, something that's small and black like lice. And then you need to grind your pepper or shake your pepper all over where you've put the glue on the animals. And when it dries, what will happen is that your animals and your people will look like they've got the little lice crawling all over them. Oh, it's making me itchy. So there's my person with their pepper lice all over them. But I forgot to colour them in. And there's my cow, also with pepper all over it. And last of all, there's my sheep with pepper all over it. And then you can very carefully cut them out like I've done. And that will remind you that today we learnt about the plague of lice when God sent lice and it was on men, women, boys, girls and all of the animals, the cows and the sheep, all of the animals in Egypt. And it will remind you that God sent the lice but Pharaoh's magicians couldn't send the lice. So that's something for you to remember next, next week. And then if you want to do a puzzle sheet, then there's a puzzle sheet as well with a well, I was going to say a lovely big picture of a louse, a louse but I don't think it is very lovely because it's a louse and they're not very lovely. There's a big picture of a louse to colour in and there are some unscrambled word, words to unscramble. So there are muddled up words. Annie, you have to try and unscramble the words and write it in the box. And then underneath, it's a bit hard to see, underneath some of the letters there are numbers. And those numbers you can then copy into the boxes at the bottom to find a hidden message that tells us what the magician said when they couldn't turn the dust into lice. So that's a puzzle on one side. And then there's our think question. Why couldn't the magicians turn the dust into lice? A nice easy question. And then there's an un a puzzle to crack the code for this week's memory verse. So you've, the memory verse has got numbers and you need to work out what letter is which number. So there's this week's memory verse. 
So those are all of the things that you can be doing this week. And remember, if you want me to email you the puzzle sheet, you can send me a message on here and I'll email everything to you. Or you can go to my church's website if you search for Providence Chapel Chichester and you'll find everything on there and you can download everything each week. And there's also a link on there to the YouTube channels if you want to watch Saturday Club again or if you want to share it with someone else. So that would be really good to do. So we're going to finish off by singing a song and it's a song we haven't sung for a while. We're going to sing God Has a Plan for You. And remember it goes like this. God has a plan for you, something only you can do. Listen while he calls you by name. You are in his plan before the world began and he longs that you give your life to him. So let's sing that now. Are you ready? God has a plan for you, something only you can do. Listen while he calls you by name. You were in his plan before the world began and he longs that you give your life to him. Thank you very much for joining me in Saturday Club this week and I'll see you next Saturday, God willing, at the same time at half past nine where we'll be learning about the plague of flies. And just to warn mums and dads, for the craft next week, you're going to need a straw. Just one, but you'll need a straw. See you next week. Bye.